We begin tonight with breaking news out of Del Mar. At least 2,500 residents are under a mandatory evacuation order right now, while 1,400 others have evacuation warnings. This fire is currently burning near Carmel Valley Road and Via El Prilia, and several roads in that area remain closed tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Anna Laurel in for Carlo Chiquetto. Right now, two firefighters taken to the hospital because of heat exhaustion. And as Marcella just mentioned, mandatory evacuations ordered for thousands of people in the area. Let's go straight to CBS 8's Richard Allen, who is live in Del Mar. Richard, you've been out there all afternoon. Uh, a better scene than it was a couple hours ago, for sure. Absolutely. Things are improving. You can see in the background all of that smoke that we had seen black smoke. We had seen white smoke, but that smoke has dissipated as we sweep around here. We can see what they were fighting to save all the residents here and all of these homes here in Del Mar Heights. Now, some very good news to report at this moment. San Diego Fire Department reporting that the forward rate of progress in this fire has been stopped at 19 acres. In fact, let's look at some video earlier this afternoon at the aggressive fire fight they put on. Now, right now, the fire is 5% contained. That's according to San Diego Fire. But the fact that we have any containment at this point is very good news, showing that the firefighters are getting a handle on this blaze, which had been threatening homes since about 2.30 this afternoon. Now, we spoke earlier with Battalion Chief Chris Babbler, and we asked him what the biggest challenges were facing firefighters as they worked to combat this fire. The steep slope, the wind coming off the ocean, the unburned fuel here, um, this is coastal chaparral, a lot of pine litter, a lot of old pine trees that are in this area. It started coming up towards the houses, and a lot of these streets were very congested at the time of the fire um, when it first started. As well, um, a lot of cul-de-sacs, beautiful cul-de-sacs with nice houses that, that litter in this area. And speaking of those homes and those beautiful cul-de-sacs, the residents in those homes are still facing evacuations at this time. As you mentioned at the top, 2,500 under mandatory evacuation orders and about 1,400, 1,474 under evacuation warnings strongly suggested. We are hoping, though, that those warnings and those orders will be lifted shortly. Now, at this time, we've been told by the battalion chief that conservatively by 10 p.m., those, those road closures and hopefully those evacuations will be lifted, hopefully, though, before then. Right now, they're saying around 10 p.m., but hopefully it could be before that. Marcella, Anna? Thanks so much, Richard. I know that they will make sure that the flames are completely out before leaving tonight since they did break out uh, those mm -hmm. flames this morning and reignited. Uh, let's check in now with meteorologist Carleen Chavis. You know, winds were gusty at times today, and that was a factor for firefighters. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis is here early with a look at our current conditions. Carleen? Yeah, we are talking about the winds being a factor for today because we had that afternoon sea breeze and actually just westerly winds throughout much of the day. Now, it wasn't sustained. It was the wind gusts that were picking up. And so we had that on again, off again throughout much of this day. Now, we also had some gusts that were into the teens earlier when the fire started to break out around roughly 10 this morning and then still seeing that through about lunchtime. And that's because that wind gust was picking up the ember pushing it a little bit more, and then that's when we started to see it spread as we did have those gusts that were into double digits. When we take a look at current conditions, 12 miles per hour with the wind gusts, the closest weather station that we could find for Del Mar Heights. Also talking about the direction out of the west. So that is the uh, sea breeze that developed. You have eight miles per hour. That was for Del Mar, Del Mar Heights for right now. And also the temperatures not being a huge factor, at least for that location. Closer towards the coast today, you had widespread 70s as we are backing off from the heat that we've recently had. So we'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Anna. All right, Carlene, thank you for the latest weather conditions and alerts on the go. You can download the free CBS 8 app from Google Play or the App Store. And stay with us throughout this newscast as we continue to monitor what's happening in Del Mar right now. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom used his State of the State address to defend California's progressive values ahead of a pivotal presidential debate. During a pre-recorded speech released by his office, Newsom highlighted the state's economy, along with efforts to combat homelessness. We've cleared now over 9,300 dangerous encampments, and we're helping tens of thousands of people move from tents and freeway underpasses to shelter or housing. He also said when it comes to the southern border with Mexico, California has proven time and time again that it is willing to tackle the hardest problems. Republicans in Congress 
choose cynicism and the dangerous path of chaos instead of doing their job to help us secure the border. Think of this. For all their talk of securing the border, they rejected over and over and over again the opportunity to add thousands of new border agents and new immigration judges. Newsom also mentioned the push for expanded access to before and after school programs and summer school. He says he plans to deploy literacy coaches to thousands of schools. Tonight, the man accused of two different kidnappings outside the Mission Valley Mall was in court. CBS 8's Shannon Handy was inside the courtroom and brings us more from Arturo Lujan's arraignment. Lujan pleaded not guilty to two attempted kidnapping charges. Now, he was initially held on kidnapping charges, but the prosecutors said they are still going over evidence and could potentially file stronger charges as this case moves forward. We do believe that there may be victims out there based on the fact that there are two incidents close in time. We are still investigating and finding out more information. And so it is possible that charges could change in the future, um, especially if we were to find um, other victims. The two attempted kidnappings Lujan was charged with both occurred in the parking lot outside the Mission Valley Mall. Prosecutors say Lujan grabbed one six-year-old girl on Tuesday of last week and a five-year-old girl two days later. In that first case, the girl was walking outside Buffalo Wild Wings with her mom, who was pushing a stroller with her little brother inside, when Lujan reportedly came up from behind her and picked her up. In the other, Lujan allegedly grabbed a girl outside the inflatable play area in the parking lot and tried to put her in his car. In that case, an employee of Inflatable World named Jasmine is being credited with helping save that little girl. Today, her manager shared details about what happened, saying they were inside the ticket booth when Jasmine saw Lujan grab the girl. She saw something going on and she said, kid, in an excited manner and didn't get to finish the sentence. She came bolting out of the trailer. I went around to see what was going on. What I saw with, you know, two little girls there. I thought they were getting ready to run out into the parking lot, so I'm grabbing up two of them. When I finally had a chance to get my wherewithal, I looked up and there she was grabbing a girl right from the fan, man's hand. So she saw that was going on. I thought they were going into the parking lot and that's that's what happened. So she was right on top of it, being able to grab him from her his grasp. I grabbed the other two gals, made sure that they weren't going out in the parking lot. He took off and ran away. Uh, his back door was open in the, the back seat and the car was running. So he had every intention of grabbing and going. Lujan faces four years, 10 months in prison if convicted. He is being held without bail. Today in court, the judge said if released, he believes there's substantial likelihood it will result in great bodily harm to others. Reporting from downtown, I'm Shannon Handy for CBS 8. Wow, that's some really, uh, I mean, to hear from this lady that the, the employees of the mall saved that little girl basically from that man grabbing them and taking them to it's his car. It's amazing and so great that they were alert and uh, yeah. were able to get her out safe. Yes.